Hi folks! So October 31st is just a few days away, and man am I excited. Halloween is my Christmas. I do wish the government would make it a statutory holiday. Anyway, as the inaugural video for my new and unimproved YouTube channel, I thought it would be a fun idea to toast five perennial favorites of mine that always manage to make their way into my DVD player, or my VCR as the case may be, around this time of year. Here they are in chronological order, the Oscar Nazis, oops, I mean the award Nazis, five favorite Halloween movies. Starting off my list is the classic 1960 thriller Psycho from director Alfred Hitchcock, the master of suspense. This is arguably the finest film Hitch ever made, and that's no faint praise given that his portfolio was chock full of some of the most nail-biting thrillers and suspense movies of all time. Slightly dated by today's standards, but it's remarkable just how chilling this movie still is some 50 years after its release. Among the elements that set Psycho apart are its dark, eerie production design, beautifully composed black-and-white cinematography, and shrill, unnerving all-strings musical score by the great Bernard Herrmann. To this day, I still get the heebie-jeebies whenever I stay the night in a motel. Cult classic The Rocky Horror Picture Show has been a midnight staple at art house cinemas across North America for the last 35 years, technically making it the longest continuous theatrical release in motion picture history. It's a zany musical homage to the sci-fi B-movies of the 1950s that features a catchy rock and roll song score and an unforgettably raunchy performance from Tim Curry as Dr. Frankenfurter, everyone's favorite sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania ha ha. It may not be the sort of movie I'd want to sit at home and watch by myself, but to see it in a crowded theater surrounded by hardcore devotees is a different set of jaws, and something you've got to experience at least once before you die. I myself am attending a screening at my local Bijou this Halloween, and yes, I am dressing up as one of the characters from the film. I won't tell you which one, but let's just say I'm hoping it's not going to be a particularly cold evening. Legendary horror movie maker John Carpenter may be more well known for his highly influential 1978 slasher flick Halloween, whose title implies would be a perfect inclusion on this list, but for my money, a much more frightening and unpredictable movie is his 1982 remake of The Thing, wherein a team of researchers in the Antarctic are set upon by a mysterious alien creature that has the ability to inhabit their human bodies. Instead of the more obvious terror tactics he employed in Halloween or The Fog, Carpenter's approach is more refined in this film, placing the focus on paranoia, tension, and the feeling of isolation to send shivers down the viewer's spine, especially in the fantastic cliffhanger ending, which I dare say is one of the best endings I've seen in any movie ever. And for those who just want to see some horrific, gory, gross-out scenes, no need to worry, there's plenty of that thrown in too, just for good measure. Next up is a treat just for my nostalgic inner child. It's the 1993 Walt Disney feature Hocus Pocus, a silly romp about three witches who return from the dead on Halloween to terrorize three young protagonists and a talking cat. Hocus Pocus is really a kid's movie, and my adult sensibilities constantly remind me of how obnoxious the young actors are and how childish, nonsensical, and sloppy the script is. But hey, that can be forgiven. Adult sensibilities be damned! because the real reason to watch this movie is for the threesome of villainous witches, played with relish by Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker. An unusual choice of actors, to be sure, but in this film they form the most hilarious comedic trio since Curly, Larry, and Moe. The three of them share an enjoyable chemistry, filling the screen with delightful comic details. Clearly they were having a lot of fun. I'll probably keep watching Hocus Pocus every Halloween till the day I die, purely for the joy of beholding their collective performance. And finally, because no Halloween would be complete without a good ghost story, I'd be remiss to exclude The Others, an underrated 2001 horror film from Spanish director Alejandro Emenebar, who puts an interesting twist on the traditional haunted house subgenre. Now, that doesn't mean he breaks any of the haunted house traditions, mind you. In fact, he absolutely nails the creepy atmosphere necessary for this kind of movie. The mansion in which nearly the entire film is set stands isolated atop a foggy British moor. Inside is perpetually dark, often lit only by the deep warm glow of a single oil lamp or candle. That, combined with the clever, spooky sound design, helped make the house as much a character as any of the people in the film. But of course, the rock that really centers this movie is Nicole Kidman, who gives a dramatic, heart-rending performance as a grieving war widow who becomes increasingly suspicious and defensive as a result of the strange goings-on in her creaky Victorian manner. So that's my list. Obviously, not every Halloween film I love can make the top five, so honorable mentions go out to The Addams Family, An American Werewolf in London, The Exorcist, and, even though it's not really a movie, Michael Jackson's epic music video Thriller, which never fails to put me in the Halloween mood. 
tough for now, and have a happy Halloween.